Coming up, announcement of the $100 million purchase of the Grand Lucayan Resort. Cost of living rises with the increase of certain bread basket items. PM in London and sex offenders registry kiosk set to begin. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sonobia Williams with your JCN News for this Wednesday, May 11th. Thank you for joining us. The deal is done. The Grand Lucayan Resort on Grand Bahama is sold for a whopping $100 million. Acting Prime Minister and Minister with Responsibility for Tourism, Chester Cooper, making the grand announcement today in a press conference from Grand Bahama. Our Austin Fernanda has more in this report. Good news for Grand Bahama. The Grand Lucay Resort has been sold. In keeping with its blueprint for change, the New Day government has delivered on its promise to close a deal on the widely controversial resort property, which was purchased by the former Free National Movement government for $65 million back in 2018. Back then, former Prime Minister Hubert Minnis said that the government had made a deposit of $10 million for the property, which had been shut down in October of 2016 following Hurricane Matthew. The former administration had purchased a resort to facilitate its eventual resale and save jobs. Well, Acting Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation Chester Cooper at a press conference on Wednesday made the announcement that the government has formally accepted a bid of $100 million from Electra America Hospitality Group for the sale of the property. We have always believed in the viability of the property, but did not believe it belongs in the hands of the government. Rather, we sought a buyer for the Grand Lucayan that was well-resourced, well-intentioned, desired to be a strong community partner, had a vision for the resort, and a willingness to partner with the shared vision for the growth of Grand Bahama. Today, the government of the Bahamas announces that we have found a buyer for the Grand Lucayan Hotel that meets all of those criteria. According to Julian Russell, chairman of Lucayan Renewal Holdings Limited, there was a total of 72 expressions of interest made, resulting in just 12 bid submissions. Of these 12 submissions, Electra Hospitality Group was selected on the collective merit of its conglomerate achievement and significant professional referrals. Lucayan Renewal Holdings Limited, the special purpose vehicle, that owns the Grand Lucayan Resort on behalf of the Bahamian people, has entered an agreement for the sale of the entire property to Electra America Hospitality Group. Electra, as we will call them today, their principles boast of over 150 years collective experience in the hospitality business. Electra is a part of a conglomerate, Electra America, with worldwide assets worth $7 billion in significant capital holdings. The government has accepted Electra's purchase offer for the Grand Lucayan Resort of $100 million. Dubbed the beginning of the renaissance and rebirth of Grand Bahama, the acting prime minister revealed that their agreement is subject to 60-day due diligence period with a closing period of 120 days. The acting PM also notes that the purchasing company Electra has agreed to allocate $300 million to fuel significant upgrades and additions to the property, including a fully refurbished golf course and country club, a casino, a 500-room convention hotel, and a 200-room all-suite-style family resort. The deal is projected to be finalized by the summer, with construction expected to begin sometime soon after. The project is expected to generate some, some 2,000 construction jobs and 1,000 permanent jobs for Grand Bahamians. Reporting for JCN News, I'm Austin Fernando. The cost of living for Bahamians is taking another hike as inflation increases on a number of bread basket food items. Minister of Economic Affairs Michael Halkidis in the Senate today highlights that contrary to information being circulated on social media, the idea that the government has increased all bread basket items is not a true picture. 
The minister adds that importers do not make application for increased items as a general food product, but by a particular item by brand, for which importers have had their import price increased. The minister further speaks to the dilemma of importers if approval is not given. People import, they apply for the, the margin to be applied at their newer, at their higher cost. You decide to not do it, then they either they're stuck. So you might have to make them whole or do something else for, for them. Or they might decide, well, I'm not importing it. <coughs> can't, I can't get it. The government is, is um, you know, not um, exercising good faith. This is how it has, this has been the practice since 1971 when price control was introduced. And so you can either get individuals stuck with items that are, and they have to eat the cost, okay. Or they might decide, I'm not going to import it, and then you, you don't have the item on the shelf. So it's a vexing issue, Madam President. Regarding the government's ability to address the rising cost of importation, Minister Halkidas says this. I don't want the uh, the human public to be left with the impression that the government is unconcerned or the government is, is callous. Um, we are limited in the tools in our toolbox to deal with it. We're exploring a number of things right now. And the public might hear, will hear some things um, very uh, shortly. But again, we, we have to be uh, very measured in, in, in what we do. I am often asked, and I, I try to be as, as open, well, I, I'm as open as, and accessible as possible when I provide these answers. And the issue is the imported inflation. We import so many things and we experience the inflation. Some of those items already approved and now being gazetted for the price increase are particular brands of flour, corned beef, vegetable oil, evaporated cream, and margarine. On Tuesday, Prime Minister Philip Davis was the featured guest at the headquarters of the Commonwealth in London. This was following a stop in the United States where he delivered the commencement address at Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, where he was presented with an honorary doctorate on Saturday. Well, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Public Service Fred Mitchell took the opportunity to update the public on the PM's engagements in London. The Secretary General Baroness Patricia Scotland invited the Prime Minister to share with the wider Commonwealth and the world the issues related to climate change and the extent to which there is an issue which is existential for the Bahamas it means it threatens our very existence. Indeed, the Prime Minister was able to tell the story of places in his own village in Cat Island where once there was land, it's now seawater. That means that sea level rise is a clear and present danger, so this is not far-fetched as a problem. So the Prime Minister is at every forum leading the charge on climate change. The issue has been one of the central themes of Baroness Patricia Scotland as Secretary General of the Commonwealth. The as it relates to the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Minister Mitchell says that Prime Minister Davis is also leading another charge in support of ba Baroness Patricia Scotland, the first female Secretary General of the Commonwealth. The problem is there is now an assault on the leadership of the current Secretary General who stood up for the small island developing states, which is not based on or grounded in fact. The first and only woman Secretary General and all her predecessors were male got two terms. There were some who wished to deny her that opportunity today, and it's not right. The Bahamas Prime Minister stood by Baroness Patricia Scotland and has urged his colleagues, fellow Prime Minister, to allow her to serve out a second term. The problem is, while the developed world talks the talk, you see, of climate change, something they precipitated and, and not caused by our societies but theirs, but they are unwilling to pay and walk the walk. In the Bahamas, we say, and we tell them, talk is cheap, but money buys land. The According to Minister Mitchell, the Bahamas chooses to remain a part of the Commonwealth because it affords us the opportunity to have diplomatic relations with 53 other diverse countries, which the Bahamas could never afford to have full-time diplomatic missions. Meanwhile, officials at the office of the Prime Minister say PM Davis and his delegation are expected to return home sometime this evening.
Provisions are being made for the establishment of a sexual offenders registry in the country with the introduction of a sexual offenders registry kiosk in accordance with the Sexual Offenders Act of the Bahamas, which was enacted on July 24, 2019. The Sexual Offenders Registry ensures that all convicted sex offenders in the country are registered in the database of the Bahamas Sexual Offenders Registry Management System. To that end, the kiosk, which will be introduced on Thursday at the Wolf Road Police Station, will be used to register sexual offenders upon their release from prison and provide updated information in the case of a change in residency or travel. The event will begin at 10.30 a.m. Minister of National Security Wayne Munro is expected to be in attendance. Police in the capital are investigating the circumstances that led to a young woman being sexually assaulted during the early morning hours of Wednesday. According to police, a woman was jogging in western New Providence early this morning when she was approached by a man who attacked her, allegedly pulling her into nearby bushes, where he proceeded to assault her sexually. Now, police say there is a person of interest they're currently in search of in connection with this incident. The Royal Bahamas Police Force is advising women around the capital to exercise extreme caution when exercising or commuting along during early morning or late night hours and ensure that all doors and windows are properly secured when entering or leaving home alone. You're watching JCN News. More top stories on the way. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Silhouette Boutique Collection.